back to the Axminster Skill Centre for another Skill Centre at Home Live video, but not so live. Apologies for you guys yesterday that tuned in uh, and um, we were unable to complete our sliding dovetail task. Um, we had some gremlins in the system and one of them uh, pinched our Wi-Fi, I think. Uh, we, we dropped out a signal, so couldn't go live. So we've come in first thing this morning and decided to film from scratch today for you. So we were looking at the sliding dovetail. So the kind of the first joint that we've looked at in a series of videos. A useful joint, uh, a male and female part. You've got a dovetail shaped groove and then kind of dovetail shaped tenon, which slides into that groove. Great for making boxes, good for making, uh, putting in decorative and really strong shelves. Um, so what we're using is now a lot of people, I guess, I certainly have, I've got a box set of 12 cutters. Um, they get the dovetail bit in there and they think, well, unless I've got a dovetail jig, am I going to use the dovetail bit? Well, there's a couple of uses for this. You don't necessarily have to do the do corner dovetail box joints. The sliding dovetail and the, the dovetail corner lap, which I can cover in a later video, um, you know, are, are easily done with this, uh, with this dovetail cutter. So that's the one we're going to focus on today. Dovetail cutter, sliding dovetail. Pop that out of the way. So I'm just going to load the cutter into the machine first. The machine is unplugged. It is now. There we go. Okay. We're inserting the cutter three quarters of the way along the shank. Or up to the K line if it's visible. Alright. So that's locked in. Not too tight. Spin her out of the way. And then... Just that spindle lock snapped back over. Today we're using the Bosch 1250, the GOF 1250 router. It's a powerful machine for a quarter inch, 1250 watts, variable speed, some really sweet features. I love the micro adjustment. And in most applications, the extraction clearance, the waste clearance is very, very good. Comfortable in the hand, uh, nice tool. It's one that we use uh, a lot here in the scale center. So that's my cutter loaded in. Then the material I'm going to join together is very similar to this. They're only, this is only softwood that I'm machining right now. If I was machining something harder, uh, oak or maple or something, maybe I'd drop in a smaller quarter inch, just a small straight cutter first, just to remove a little bit of the waste. But as this is softwood, easy to machine, uh, doesn't put a great deal of resistance against the machine or the cut or myself, I'm going to use uh, just the dovetail, dovetail cutter straight on through. So, first things first, I'll put a little line down the centre of the workpiece. And clamp it in the vise. There we go. So we're kind of set and ready to go now. But I know there's an issue here. We're going to also be using the parallel side fence, which comes with most routers. This one is really quite sweet. It's got the fine adjustment on there to, to tweak alignment to get you exactly cut a center to your center line on your material. But first, I've got a little issue with stability here. It probably sits on there reasonably well, but when I'm starting my cut, before and after, I have very little base to timber contact, and it makes it quite vulnerable, and, and starting like that is difficult. Um, you'll end up with a, a little wavy start, then a straight line, and then a little wavy exit as you, you end up dropping off the material. So, what we could do to resolve that is add in what we call a, a set of skis. Same piece of material. Dropped in the vise. Two pieces of, I've got it, uh, like a 9mm, 8mm MDF here. This is all flush, but I've got support before and after the cut, and I've increased my width slightly, so it's a little bit more stable all around. And that sits on there and gives me stability before the cut, after the cut, so I don't, I don't drop off. As I said, we're going to introduce the parallel side fence, okay? Almost all routers have them available if they don't come with them as standard. And that drops in, it gives us a straight edge to work with. But a question we get a lot is which side 
do I need this side fence? Well, remember, if you, if you did watch video number one, I talked about cutter drift. If you're doing freehand stuff with a straight cutter, you pull the cutter towards you. With the rotation of the cutter, it drifts to the left. If I push away from me with the cutter rotation, it drifts to the right. Now we can use this side fence to our advantage here, knowing that if I pull through, the cutter naturally wants to pull to the left here, pulling the fence to my workpiece, keeping it in contact at all times and making the cut straighter so there is no drift off. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the fence on the right hand side, knowing that it's pulling to the left, keeping that fence in contact. Now I want to centre my cutter to my line after all. On this little Bosch, it's really quite sweet. There's a little hole just in the base of the router. Some routers have a little marker there. So you can pick up the centre line of your cutter because it's very difficult to eyeball where is the centre of my cutter. Now the router, as said, has a lovely little hole there and I can lock that off and I can even tweak and fine tune with a fine tune adjustment on this but nice and visible on dead center yeah. so that now feels really stable to pull through this quite small piece of material this is a job you could do at the router table but I thought it'd be nice to introduce the fence and show this at bench work because not everybody's got a router table we understand that I'm gonna set depth now the maximum depth on this cutter, so the cutting height, is, is only about 12-13 millimetres and I don't want to go to that maximum. So I'm only going to set to 10 mil. I'll zero off, which is just plunging the cutter down till it makes contact with the workpiece. I'll then use the, the gauge on the side of the machine, zero to zero, and then lift up the stop till it hits the 10 mil mark. That's it, lock it off. Now at this point, I have a 10 millimeter gap here. So when I plunge down, this comes into contact with the, the bottom turret stop here, and gives me a very precise 10 mil depth of cut. I've adjusted the speed. Small diameter cutter, high speed, okay? So, I'm almost ready to go. I'll just pop that there, I'll get my eyes and ears. Pass me some glasses, Ben. Yep. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Right. So, eyes and ears. Extraction on. Power on. That's all right. Okay. Okay, remember. I'm literally just pulling, pulling through the cup. dovetail slot through the center of our material at 10 millimeters depth from the top surface. Now you may notice there's a considerable amount of uh, sawdust, some waste in here. When you do a, what they call a closed cut, it's very difficult to extract the waste out of this slot as you go. If you're edge molding or creating a wider groove, it's easier to, for, for the waste to escape in effect. And even with the, you know, the really powerful good extraction that we've got in here with the, some of the Bosch ones, it's difficult to extract. So this is normal, don't worry. It does come out easily. And there we go, softwood a little bit stringy. So, a dovetail slot. Now we need to produce the dovetail shaped tenon to go into that slot. And for this we're gonna hit up the router table. I'm just gonna take the cutter out of the router. Cause yes, we use the very same cutter. 
I've unplugged the machine, pop this cover out. Remember it tightens up after you think you've undone it. That's a safety lock. Here we are. So we're going to take this standard dovetail cutter over to the router table now. Need that cable so Ben doesn't drip over. Here we go. So follow me over to the router table, Ben. Okay. And we're going to just load in the cutter the way we've done it on a number of occasions. Right, quarter inch shank, quarter inch collet. We'll load that in. Too tight, two or three grunts. And there we go, we can you see what we've got there? Dovetail cutter, just the same. And it goes into the router table. And there you go. Now there's a couple of measurements we've got to make here. Now what I've done, I've in, in, put in the, the, the very smallest table insert I have because it's always good to close down the aperture around the cutter as much as possible, both in the table and in the fence area. The fence will set in a moment, that's critical, but for the moment I need to set the cutter height. And that's the same as the cutter depth I set at 10 mil. So we could get a nice little device like this, a little vernier depth gauge, and turn it on. We zero off the table first. Zero, zero. So very much like you're zeroing off. You're getting your, your zero mark on when you plunge your cutter. And then you see what we've got here. Well, we're a little bit high, that's 10.15. So we can drop that down to that meets our required 10 mil. Or, or you can just use the piece of material that you've just created and offer that up what we're looking for is for this area, just here, just to touch the tip of the cutter. Right, so that, I'm just finely adjusting, very finely adjusting that cutter up until it makes contact. Not too high. Check my fans. Lovely. That is perfect. Really easy way to set the cutter height. Pop that to one side. I'm just going to square that cutter off through to the fence and introduce the fence. Bring that over. Now is there a measurement I can do to get this right? Now I know I want this piece of material to slide through this piece of material. What I like to do is just offer it up. Now your sight line is really good down here, so sorry about the back of my head, but there you go. Right, I'm just going to take a little skim off first and then work my way into width. So let's do that. I'll lock that fence off. Now, we've got the ability then just to tweak and fine tune from this end with that locked. All right. Whatever we adjust, if we I was to, it's a scale on here, if I was to knock that back a millimetre here, for instance, well, because this is halfway along our travel, it's only about half a millimetre here. But that half a millimetre is coming off both sides of your dovetail. So a millimetre is equal to a millimetre reduction in dovetail slot, or dovetail tenon. So once again, I'll just offer that up, lock that in. Now we've got a small piece of material here, and as experienced as I am with this sort of stuff, I don't like putting my hands too close to the cutters. You know, I mean, 30 odd years of doing this business, um, I've still got on my digits, um, and I want to keep it that way. So safety. And we've got a number of these little pushing devices, and that's what I'm going to use just to drive this cutter through the cut. I'm going to get my eyes and ears on again. Okay. 
turn that off. Okay, now there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could know the diameter of our cutter. Now that's 12 millimeters across the diameter, and we can try and match that to 12 mil. We could measure the top end of the slot, or we could just try it. Does it fit? Let's, let's have a look. And we can see that that's really, really quite too big. It's not going to slide through. I think depth is okay. So the distance from here to the shoulder is, is good. It's just what we want. But it's just too wide. Even with the biggest uh, persuader hammer that I have, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to knock the fence back. And as I knock the fence back, you'll see more cutter projections, more cutter coming through. And that's what's going to remove the material. So a little tweak, and I'm going to keep an eye on. I've got a, a measuring scale on the side of my router table here. But if you don't have that scale, and you just want some sort of datum point, some reference point, where did I start? Just put a little pencil mark on your router table top, and then that gives you somewhere to start. Because you might move it and think, oh, where did I start? I've got a, no reference point to come to. So I'm just going to knock that back a millimetre, which is half a mil here, but the millimetre in total, because it's half a mil each side. Because we've got to do both sides. Right, we'll do again, and then we'll try for fit. Okay, well, it's certainly looking better. But how far away are we? Oh, that is such... Nope, I'm not going to get the hammer out. If that was, if I was to try and force that through, particularly if it's, a, you know, I want, I want it to be the final piece and I'm going to glue it, I put glue in, and as I force that in, the best part, it forced the majority of the glue out. So we want just a little bit removed. And this is just a case of knocking this fence back the smallest amount. If you do a lot of this sort of stuff, some fences, certainly on this UJK one that we use here, there's a finer adjuster, a fine adjuster just here. So we can twiddle a little knob and move that fence back just the smallest amount. So it's a nice feature on this one. I'm not going to use it. We're going to, a little bit old school. There we go. Being super fussy, I'd want to just take the, another little skim off that. Bear with me, I'm super fussy, sorry. Here we go. And this could be just your setup piece. You might have 20 or 30 of these to do to cut. So just taking your time to set up one with the same material thickness that you're going to use for your project is worth it. Seems a bit of a fiddle in the path, but it is worth it. Have to take that one. Oh, that's beautiful. So there we go. We have the sliding dovetail. I will cut a depth both at the bench and at the router table was equal. You can see because we've got no gap at the bottom, no gap on these shoulders here, and it slides through really well. Now all you've got to do, I know these are relatively small pieces of material, but you just upscale, it just takes longer to push through with longer pieces. All right, so there we have a good use for that dovetail cutter that, that sits there unused and lonely in your, in your router cutter box, um, the sliding dovetail. Okay then, if we can go back over to the bench. So we've had a request from a chap called Michael to have a look at the UJK Precision Groove Jig. 
Now in effect, what we've just done is create a groove, a dovetail shaped groove. Now we use the side fence, which is good, but what about if we wanted to create a groove or a series of grooves along a board to make a set of shelves? So, something like this, for instance. Can you see this, Ben? Is that all right? Moment. Yep. All right, so you've got a series of grooves set at a specific distance apart. Um, and they've got to be straight through, and it's very difficult to do with a router table, because we can't get in that far. Difficult to do with your parallel side fence at the bench, because we can't get in that far. So, on a board very similar size to this, we're going to do a couple of grooves, and I'll show you a couple of techniques of doing it with both the, uh, the, 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 the clamp guide and then the groove jig. The clamp guides have been around a long time. And they're great, they're just a clampable straight edge. Normally, yeah, you'd get a bit of wood, you'd, you'd clamp it in position, you'd square it off to your line and, and away you'd go. Um, and that's fine, you know, I'd, I'd do it at home a little bit. I've got a couple of these, but these, these groove jigs and clamp guides, we've used a lot in the skill centers since they've been out. We've dropped tracking tables, we've dropped, actually I used it to put this tracking this uh, homemade router table here. It's really quite useful. Yes, you could just get your, your router. Butt it up against the jig, uh, the, the, the clamp guide and slide through. Nothing wrong with that. But there's always that risk, that risk that you, you're gonna come off. You're not gonna end up straight. You, the end is gonna tail off or, or something's gonna go wrong because you're not gripped, you're not clamped in position. That's where this groove jig comes in. First thing, step one, you need to identify where you need your shelf grooves. I've got a line there and I'm going to clamp my clamp guide square to it about 50 mil away from my line square. I want my clamp to be square. These clamp guides, they don't clamp themselves square. You've got to, they're close, and sometimes you hit it bang on, but it's always worth double checking. And then they clamp, they really do grip very, very well. So with my board locked in position, I've got a straight edge. We'll talk about this little gizmo in a moment or two. We've got a straight edge. This is designed to drop onto that clamp guy and slide through. It's designed to use with other manufacturers clamp guys, not just these UJK ones. So you've got a, like a fence inside there. Can you see that bends up there right? Yeah. You've got a fence inside there with an adjuster. So you can clamp down on subtly different widths of clamp guard. Nylon, easy slip base here. So it glides over the material without stalling and stalling but that wouldn't be acceptable. So we've got the ability just to dial that in so it's, it's gripped without movement, but slides through easily. And then we can lock that in position. We've got a couple of secondary locks here just to be double sure it doesn't move. Yeah, that glides through. We've got this adjustable mounting block here. This is designed to be used with the standard 30 millimeter guide bush. So most machines come with guide bushes, 16 mil or 30 mil. 30 mil is a really, really, really common size. Um, and this is designed for your guide bush, like we've got on this machine here. 30 mil guide bush is designed just to drop into that slot there. Now that's your guide then. That's sliding through. All right. So I'm just going to set this one up just to put a quick groove through that. There. We've got a movement there, but I don't want movement at this stage. And we've got a set of collars here that we can either clamp together in a particular position so we've got no movement, or, which I'll do in a moment, we can allow ourselves to have a controlled amount of movement. Say we've got only a 10 mil cutter and we want a 14 mil groove. Well, this scale on here can help us move the two mil one way and two mil the other way to make that cutter do instead of just the 10 mil 
an easy controlled 14 mil groove or 20 mil groove or, or whatever it is. So this is this is really quite nice. Now for this one, I'm just going to center. Now you can see I've got a center line here. That's dead center to this aperture where the guide bush fits in. I'm going to center that to my line. Now sometimes it's still is it's difficult to eyeball where that is. So it comes with a lens which drops in at 30 mil, and we can eye that up and know that that is just dead on my 30 mil line. So as it's right there right now, I'm going to do that up. Am I there? Yes, I am. Here we go. So that one does up. Alan Key, slide that one over. Slide that one against it. Now we've got no movement here. It's controlled. It's captive. Not going to move. Lock them against each other. That isn't going to go anywhere there. Safe. So that 10 mil cutter I've got mounted in this DeWalt router is going to follow that line there. If I didn't want to slide all the way through the front of my board, you want to do a stop groove, you can get these little stoppers here. So that can be locked in position to stop your groove. All right? You might not want to see the front of your shelf through the front of your cabinet. You just do the stop groove. And you can put another one here if you want to stop both sides to slot in instead of slide through. That's quite a nice little thing. So we're going to fire up the uh, the Dewalt router. Ben, if you do the honours and plug me in, my friend. Thank you very much. This is my extraction adapter change. Drops in there nicely. All right. Now, you're setting depth, but you always set depth when you're mounted onto the thing. There's no good setting depth here and then coming onto this, because that will alter your depth, because you've got this thickness here to contend with. So, setting depth, we plunge down until the cutter makes contact with the workpiece, and then we can, if we know how much we want, we'll zero off on the scale. So, I'm going to go 10 mil in and my 10 mil groove. There we go. Now, when I plunge down, it's only going to plunge in 10 mil into this. What is about 16 mil material. Okay, so I'll be making sure that squares out of the way, that's for sure. Plunge down, pull through. Yeah, just move that cabinet, mate. Slide him over and get that hose in front of him. Yeah. Right. Oh, watch out. That's on there, it's falling off. There we go. Okay, so if we're plugged in, yep, are we ready to go? by 10 mil groove the stock they had the stopper in place okay what about if I needed it just a little bit wider I wanted to drop in and say a 14 millimeter shelf well that's not going to go in there right now so I just need to make an adjustment so we've got some some side to side all right so what we need to do is just note where we are here and make they adjust these collars so we got two mil movement that way, two mil movement, uh, two mil movement that way. All right, so let's adjust that collar, move the pointer. That's two mil. Pull it right back up and back to your start position, and then undo these. Right. I'm going to do the right 
way. Lift that up too tight, great. Right, and then make an adjustment here so we can go two mil the other way. And it's nice, these are dialable, so you've got some real fine adjustment here. Alright, we should go two mil either way now with my centre point. There. And there. I think that one just needs a little bit more of a tweak this way. And this one's lovely having the scales here. We're metric and imperial, depending on which you prefer to use. There we are. Two mil slot, really, so I can use that cutter beyond its ten millimeter width. Okay, happy Ben. bit of adjustment still needed. Like I say, this is the first one, so there we go. I'd rather just be on the conservative side of removing material than the other way, because you can't put it back on. There's oh, my scale. Just allowing that cutter over a little bit more. There we go. So the first one you do, the setup is always you go, a little bit longer because you're just tweaking, getting stuff right. So that's shave off. We might as well do it. Let's, let's just adjust that and get it right. So the setup one is always just a little bit longer. I'm only going to move the one side I think because it's such a, a small amount now. The adjustment is quick and easy. So that's the UJK Precision Groove Jig. A controllable way of doing repeat square, a repeat depth grooves and trenches, even at a dovetail shape if you wanted to. There's nothing stopping you from putting the dovetail shape through this board. Um, and you know, something that we've used an awful lot in the Skill Center since it's been released. Um, so, we are just about done for the day. I hope you found that useful. Certainly if you've got any questions, please post them. We will pick them up and answer them. And I look forward to seeing you next week with, with better Wi-Fi. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye now.